Okay, so now let's talk about different functions that we can use for plotting and just different kinds of plots that are possible with matplotlib. As you can already as you've already seen in the gallery that I showed in the beginning, there are different uh, kinds of plots that matplotlib supports, uh, ranging from uh, yeah, like these force field style um, vector plots over just simple lines, scatter plots, uh, bar plots, um, basically every plot that you could imagine is possible in matplotlib and uh, here's just a list of different plots with examples corresponding to them and if you go to this uh, yeah, lecture notebook you can click on these um, on these functions here and you'll get to an example uh, which implements these uh, plots and show you how you can do this we'll not cover all of these different plots in this lecture but uh, yeah, we'll have a look at some of them. And uh, if you understand those, then it will be easy to understand um, basically the way you have to think about plots um, to create the other ones. So because once you understand the way the matplotlib library works, then everything else will make more sense. Um, and the more difficult or more advanced plots um, will probably get easier if you've understood uh, the basic plots like uh, x dot plot or x dot scatter. Okay, and um, yeah, we can also have uh, 2D uh, arrays, um, so we can plot images, uh, we can plot contours. Um, as you already saw and as I already said, these vector fields uh, with arrows. And then we have statistical distributions, um, so histograms, box plots, and so on. Um, yeah, but I'm not. I'm not going to get um, too far into that right now. We'll cover some of them later, but um, yeah, for now, just uh, let's just start with um, more simpler ones, namely bar plots. So we want to uh, create bar plots, which are a very nice way of um, showing yeah, the, the amounts of different kinds of data. So maybe we have different classes in our data and we want to um, yeah, visualize the distribution of these classes in our data, for example. And for that, these bar plots are very uh, useful. And um, matplotlib implements two different kinds of them. First of all, the normal bar plot, which are just vertical bars. Um, and this function actually can be generalized to just plot rectangles. Um, but the normal use for it will be bar plots. And then it also implements the bar h method and this will uh, be very similar to the bar function um, but it will just create horizontal bars instead of vertical bars all right so how do we create a simple bar plot we just call x dot bar and uh, we have to pass x and y and these are two arrays and in this case uh, x is just a range from zero to four and y are just uh, yeah, five random values that we want to visualize. And um, yeah, these x and y arrays have to have the same length. Otherwise, this will not work. And uh, then matplotlib will just show this bar plot. And it will again automatically adjust the size so that it makes room for these five different bars. And it actually already labels uh, these bars zero to four, uh, yeah, zero to four, um, just as we have our x values here. And as you can see, x and y are just NumPy arrays, um, yeah, just as we would expect. Then another feature that is very useful in the bar function are error bars, and um, in that we can, for example, visualize, um, yeah measuring errors or uncertainty um, or maybe just the standard deviation of some data. Um, these are very um, yeah, common um, usages of the errors, the error bars. And um, these are just these vertical bars at the top of each bar. Um, and they will visualize um, yeah, how far the range is for, for example, the standard deviation. Okay, and um, then if we have data, which can also be negative, then we can um, create like a visual um, border, which shows where our zero number line is. 
because if we don't create this border then there will just be um, blank space and it will just continue um, with the negative bars below and it can look a little weird because you don't really know where the zero line is but if we um, want to introduce the the zero line then we also have to call this xh line and this stands for axis horizontal line and uh, if we pass y equals zero it will know it has to create a horizontal line at the position y equals zero we set the color to black and the line width to two and if we um, yeah call this then we just get um, yeah uh, this line in the uh, the zero position here and um, also a nice visualization of these negative bars all right now if we want to have different colors for different bars for example and um, in this case we would like to color these negative bars red and leave the other ones blue then we can do that um, by uh, yeah, modifying the actual bar objects that the bar function returns so um, until now we've just discarded the return value of bar and um, so far we didn't use it so we just uh, called the function and let the uh, return value just vanish but now we want to do something with it and bar will return an array of uh, artists and these artists are just the things that are actually plotted so if we call uh, x.plot we uh, get a line artist uh, because we created a line and if we call x.bar for example we get a rectangle artist and uh, yeah we can use them to modify um, our plot so here we just call x.bar again and save our, um, yeah, our returned artists in vertical bars and then we want to iterate over them and um, we zip them with the y value and just check if this y value which we uh, which we um, have in the height variable in this function in this loop here and we'll just check if this height uh, this y value is less than zero and if so we call this bar.set and as you can see this is very similar to how we set something on the axis object uh, we just call set and use keyword arguments to pass what we want to set and in this case it's the color uh, which should be set to red then we again include this horizontal line and as you can see our uh, bars that are in the negative range are now red okay and uh, just to make sure if we actually um, are right about what was returned by this bar function we can just iterate over these vertical bars and print them and uh, here you can see that these indeed are just rectangles with a certain position a width and a height and they also have an angle which is zero at this uh, in this point but um, yeah you could also have them angled in some in some way that you want okay now uh, going from bars over to different plots and now we want to have filled plots um, and these two functions we will cover are fill and fill between and what these will do is um, yeah create filled shapes on our plots and this could for example be useful to um, highlight the area under a certain graph um, or yeah show like a range around some graph um, something in that range and um, as an example here we have a fill between call and um, what this will do is just um, yeah fill the area between our data and the zero line so here we created some random data and um, then we called this fill between using our x data which is just random values here uh, no the x is down here is um, this lin space data and the y values are just random uh, values um, yeah and then we plot this using the fill between x values are just the lin space as you imagine this is just um, from 0 to 10 and then the y are these values um, above and below the zero line and uh, we set the color to light blue and yeah this function will just um, plot the data and fill 
this function down to this zero line, which is at y equals zero. Okay, now we have a different example. And uh, in this case, we want to plot this sinusoid function and then uh, mark the area in which this, uh, in this which, uh, yeah, in uh, which the function is, um, yeah, living here. And uh, in this case, uh, we pass three arguments to fill between first the x values, then the y1 and the y2, which are the, um, yeah, the top and the bottom um, limits, which we want to draw in. And we set the color to yellow. And then um, again, to just get this line in the middle, we call the normal plot function. And uh, yeah, here we just pass our x and y mean. And uh, y mean, as you can see up here, includes this cosine function. And this is why we get this uh, yeah, sinusoid looking function here.